Hello everyone. In April 2023, the British magazine The Economist reported that the fiercest battle of 2022 is not Ukraine, but the war in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. This armed conflict lasted from November 3, 2020 to November 3, 2022. Between the army of the Ethiopian federal government and the Tigray Liberation Front forces that controlled the land. The war was initially confined to Tigray, then expanded to other nearby areas such as Afar and Amhara, affecting more than 20 million people, nearly three quarters of whom were women and children. After two years of war, it's estimated that between 162,000 and 600,000 people were killed, along with thousands of people gang raped, including girls under 18 and even women over 70. This is also one of the biggest humanitarian crises in Ethiopia, and it quickly led to widespread famine throughout the Tigray region. Although this war was ended by a permanent peace agreement, but ethnic conflicts never stopped in this country as violence flared again across the Amhara region on August 4, 2023, causing the Ethiopian Prime Minister's office to declare a state of emergency. This country forever surrounded by political instability and violence, it makes Ethiopia, which is known as the heart of Africa, the convergence of cultures, home to impressive natural wonders, fall into poverty for a long time. In this video, let's explore Ethiopia with us, the Roof of Africa. The country is known as the Roof of Africa. Ethiopia, officially known as the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, a landlocked country located in the Horn of Africa in East Africa. The country is surrounded by Eritrea, Sudan, South Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, and Djibouti. It's also a large country with an area of 1,140,300 square kilometers and is the second most populous country in Africa after Nigeria with a population of 104,080 at the end of 2022. Ethiopia's terrain is characterized by high altitude in the central region, including rugged mountain ranges on the Ethiopian highlands, large and low spreading valleys, semi-desert lowlands, grasslands, and especially the Danakil depression, considered the hottest land in the world. Great Rift Valley is characterized by majestic mountains interspersed with impressive lakes at an altitude of 1,000 meters above sea level. Abaya and Chamo are the two most prominent lakes in this area, both located in the Nechisar National Park, which is considered one of the last great wildernesses of Ethiopia. This park is also an important habitat for migratory bird populations, such as kingfishers, flamingos, and eagles. In particular, it also possesses rich wildlife, including zebra, antelope, African leopard, and hippopotamus. Thanks to the diversity of flora and fauna and natural landscapes, this place has become an exciting destination for photographers and explorers around the world. In addition, if you want to enjoy the refreshing feeling of hot springs, you should visit Shala Lake. This is a freshwater lake located in Abajata Shalan National Park and is the deepest lake in the Great Rift Valley with a maximum depth of 266 meters. Shala Lake is also a refuge for flamingos in relatively large numbers. Combined with the faint steam rising from the hot springs, it created an enchanting natural scene. Ethiopia's highest mountain is Ras Dashan at 4,550 meters above sea level. It's located in the Simon Mountains in the north of the plateau. This place is often known as one of the places in tropical Africa where it often snows. This mountain range was formed from volcanic eruptions. This place has impressive mountains with unique shapes. This also is home to many highly endangered species, including Ethiopian wolves, gelata monkeys, and especially the Walia mountain goat, a wild goat species found nowhere else in the world. Moreover, with some of the world's most beautiful hiking routes and impressive hillside lodges, the Simon Mountains are currently the most popular tourist destination in Ethiopia. Thanks to its outstanding biodiversity, along with spectacular landscapes, this park was recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1978. Danakil Basin, Ethiopia's lowest point. The Danakil Basin is believed to be the lowest point in the country because it's about 125 meters below sea level. Danakil has an area of about 10,000 square kilometers and located in the Danakil Desert in the Afar Triangle region. With year-round temperatures ranging from 37 to 62 degrees and rainfall only about 100 to 200 millimeters, so this area is also known as the Danakil Basin or the Dead Land of Ethiopia. Along with the harsh weather, this place is also a convergence of volcanic lava lakes, hot springs always boiling, sulfur mines and salt mines. All of this has helped Danakil possess a strange yet iconic beauty that hard to find anywhere else in the world. Although there are not many favorable conditions for life, 
but this is still the common home of the Afar people, who mainly live by mining and trading salt. They often used camels to transport salt to Makal market, and this journey would take about a week with only bread and water. Salt mining here is also an extremely dangerous job, because high temperatures can kill people at any time. Sometimes sudden earthquakes happen can bury both people and camels and colonize country. Discuss the process of colonization, which is the discovery, conquest and settlement of one political institution with another for a long time. It was often practiced by empires such as Persia, Greece and Rome, and later by the United States, Spain, Portugal, the United Kingdom, Russia and France. Two countries in Africa are considered by some scholars to have never been colonized, those are Ethiopia and Liberia. But in reality, Ethiopia had a short period of history under Italian rule from 1936 to 1941. This has caused controversy in whether Ethiopia should be considered a country that has never been colonized and most researchers have answered yes. Because during the invasion, Ethiopians continued to fight and the country was never under full Italian control. In 1895, when the first Italo-Ethiopia War took place between Ethiopians and Italians, it ended with Ethiopia's victory at the Battle of Adowa on March 1, 1896. Thereafter, a peace treaty was provisionally signed at Addis Ababa on 26 October 1896, recognizing Ethiopian independence. It wasn't until October 1935, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini ordered a second invasion of Ethiopia, aiming to restore Italian prestige, which had been lost at the hands of the Ethiopians at the Battle of Adowa. In May 1935, Italian troops captured the capital Addis Ababa, and then Italians controlled this country from 1936 to 1941. During that time, Italians didn't have much influence on Ethiopian culture, just focused on building infrastructure, aiming to bring them workers to live in the Ethiopian highlands. On the other hand, Ethiopian guerrillas still controlled nearly a quarter of the plateau and regularly carried out attacks against the Italian army. In addition to starting construction and repairing more than 900 kilometers of railways, the Italians have also opened new airports, especially the world-famous Impero Line, which operated since 1936. This is the flight route of the Italian national airline, Alla Latoria. It connects Rome with Libya's Benghazi, Asmara of Eritrea, Ethiopia's Addis Ababa and Mogadishu of Somalia. This is considered the longest route of the Italian colonial regime in Africa and also a testament to the power of technology and human domination of space. However, Italy lost control of that route when lost in World War II. At this time, British Imperial forces liberated Ethiopia in the East African Campaign of 1941. The country was then under British military administration. By December 1944, independence as well as sovereignty were fully restored with the signing of the Anglo-Ethiopian Treaty. Hammer Bull Jumping Ritual Some customs will make you feel scared, but that is part of their life culture. The first must mention the Hammer Bull Jumping Ceremony or called the Maturity Festival. This festival is performed by the Hama people a community living in the fertile region of the Omo River Valley, southwest of Ethiopia. This festival usually takes place before a couple gets married and is organized by the groom's family. The purpose of this ceremony is to demonstrate that the boy has transformed from a boy into an adult. Before the ceremony, the boy will have to close his body with sand as a way to purify his body. They even smeared cow dung on their bodies to increase their strength. This man will have to run twice on the backs of castrated bulls there are about seven to 10 cows. If he fell, he would be ridiculed by the girl's family and considered unqualified for marriage. Conversely, if successful, everyone in the village will celebrate and the man is also blessed to get married. In case the man is blind or disabled, other members of the tribe will help perform this ritual. As for the girls, they will give their backs to the boys to beat them until they bleed and even provoke them to be beaten hard. They wanted to create long scars on their backs to prove the sacrifice and dedication of the woman to her family. At the same time, they also affirmed that it was a blood debt that the boy must remember for the rest of his life and had to help the girl if she were in trouble. Culture and people. Regarding religion, most people in Ethiopia follow Christians, accounting for 67.3% of the country's population. Muslims accounted for 31.3%, traditional believers accounted for 0.6%, and the rest are atheists or other religions. The popularity of Christianity has influenced Ethiopian architecture, making the country famous for its series of unique stone churches, especially St. George Cathedral. 
This is one of 11 monolithic churches hewn out of stone in Ethiopia's Amhara region and was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1978. Today, it's still used by Ethiopians as an important pilgrimage site. St. George Cathedral is carved from a volcanic rock dating to the late 12th or early 13th century. To reach this cathedral, the pilgrims had to pass through a very narrow spiral-shaped artificial canyon along with a short tunnel. This is one of the most famous cathedrals in Ethiopia and sometimes called the eighth wonder of the world. In terms of culture, Ethiopians love festivals. That's why vibrant and colorful festivals are held all year round across the country. The most prominent of which is the Timcat Festival, which was recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2019. This festival takes place from 18 to 20 January every year and is best known for recreating the baptism of Jesus on Jordan River. Those are interesting facts about Ethiopia. If you have any other interesting information about this country, share it below in the comments and leave a subscribe to help the channel grow. Now, goodbye and see you later in the next sections.